Welcome to the Rejuvenate Podcast. I am your host, Chrissy Hawks, and I am here today with a wonderful guest, Amate Eschel. He is the co-founder and CEO of Young Goose, a biohacking skincare line. So we're honored to have Amate with us to share with us all of his expertise and also this beautiful skincare line that I have yet to try and I'm really looking forward to. So we're going to kick it off. Amate, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's it's my pleasure being here and uh, yeah. Uh, I'm excited to, to have this conversation. Me too. Me too. I can't wait. So let's just get started here, kind of, you know, going into yep. what's your background and, you know, how Young Goose uh, came to life, really. Well, yeah, that's, uh, I joke that this is a po- podcast on its own, but uh, <laughs> I started actually in special operations. That was my first career. And um, probably the thing that uh, you would think is um, important for special operations military and and, and the reality is quite different Um, because what you really learn is operating within a team and when you advance a little bit you learn how to build and operate teams and how to lead and and that was my 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 expertise my first career really Um, and what happened was that you know I I was the head of reconnaissance for uh, Israeli special operations group and um, I didn't want to uh, get basically get recruited into tech, which is normally what, what happens to people such as myself. I looked for a slightly different path and I stumbled upon this wonderful company that um, what happened with it eventually is that it became uh, one of the first red light therapy companies. And I uh, became the person who built built teams for that company and, and, and basically was in charge of the project of pivoting this very extremely expensive and uh, extremely complicated medical laser um, and extremely outdated, not extremely, but an outdated piece of technology and pivoting uh, this company into something that is um, forward, as far as like consumer facing, it's basically like uh, we tried to have a red light therapy panel in every home. And I'm talking about like 10, 15 years ago. So it's not. It wasn't. It it really was viewed as 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 uh, you know snake oil back then, <laughs> right. and from a person that that comes with this uh, you know military mentality, uh, I became a person that that tried to you know uh, decipher this Rubik's cube of how to of how to introduce a technology and medical technology into. Uh, into people's houses. What we know now really is is biohacking. Like if you really think of about what biohacking is, this is a lot of what biohacking is. Really, it's the it's the ability to to uh, get a, a, an impactful medical technology to be used at home. Uh, at least part of what biohacking is. And you know, that's uh, a really great way. I've never heard it explained before, but that yeah, you said it so succinctly there. That's great. Yeah. So so that that's how. Um, that's how I started to be infatuated with biohacking, health optimization, longevity, um, all of those uh, wonderful titles that, that really mean I wanted to feel better, I want other people to feel better through my work. And the company that I mentioned got sold in the end like any good Israeli company. Uh, <laughs> what we do well is build, build startups and sell them. And... Um, I was left, me and my wife were left with basically money that we didn't need in order to live, but we wanted to invest in something that is meaningful. And what we tried to do actually is we tried to create an NAD uh, cream that would work like a in a hormone replacement therapy cream where you put it on and it transdermally enriches your body. But we found out that this is not really possible because your skin likes it too much. So... So when we and why, it, why yeah. the focus on NAD specifically at that point of where you were? That's a great question. Well, I think first of all because it was a good idea. NAD again going from from something that helped me personally and then trying to have it more readily available. If you think of what we what we did before, as far as like our my hired work, and now what I tried to do f- as far as an entrepreneur. And obviously, I'm taking a long story and, and, and condensing it. But what I try to do is, again, take something that back then in, in NADIV, which I was doing, again, having disposable income, that's what I was doing. I was getting incredible results. But back then, it was $1,000, $1,500 per IV. Realizing that you would benefit of doing it weekly 
or, or you know, a few times a week basis, you can understand that's something that most people cannot afford. So what we try to do is to fund research, to, to find a way to, to bypass it and, and create something that everyone can use. Um, but we, we failed. We failed miserably. So the, the story is not, not a success story. But we made lemonade out of lemons. What we found out is that <laughs> the skin, the reason it didn't go to every cell of your body is that your skin really star- is starved of NAD. As, as we advance in age, there are a few different hallmarks of NAD depletion or there are a few different verticals in which our skin cells are being de- depleted of NAD or the, the need for NAD grows. And that, you know, you're limited to how much you can absorb and the skin always needs more. So uh, <laughs> what happened in the end was that we, we really made lemonade out of lemons and we, we found out that the skin can really enjoy with greater NAD levels. And that's the first product that was born was was an NAD boosting product with NAD nano precursors. Um, from then, we, we look to create a biohacking skincare company or a longevity skincare company where we're saying it's not only about NAD or there is no silver bullet, really. But what we're trying to do is look at the hallmarks of aging, look at what it means to age at a cellular level, not only what it means as far as your wrinkle. Yeah, I know you, myself, anyone that, we're, that, that, that is watching us right now, we look in the mirror and find faults. That is correct. And even if they don't, first of all, well done. But even if they don't, <laughs> their cells are suboptimal. And that means that even if they're perfect right now, first of all, again, well done, they're not going to be like that in the long term. So what we try to do is really to target aging at its most fundamental level, what we call upstream, like why do we age to begin with, and create products that first of all will address that but second of all, will be coherent in the way that you use them. And that's always a challenge because uh, these two are really uh, almost mutually exclusive. Uh, the best way to, yeah. I was going to say, when you say coherent in the way you use them, can you define that a little bit for our listeners? Yeah, yeah. That's actually a great uh, question to ask because think of uh, a every molecule has its own story that it's telling the skin. One molecule stimulates repair. The other one supports it. The third one stresses the skin in a way where, where the skin adapts. The fourth one is actually a, a cofactor that is very important for, for the skin to, to kind of create new collagen with, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Each one of those really needs to go to a different place in our cells, in our skin. It needs a different set of sets of molecules or around it that will support it and, and make sure it has an environment for it to, to thrive. Um, we are, so this is, this soup of molecules then needed to be addressed. Yes, we want to provide you the molecules at their best form, where wherever they need to go, their best way. Yes, but I can't make a bunch of goop and give it to you and, and let you figure out when you're putting it during the day. So one, one side of the coin was creating the most efficacious or the most uh, efficacious delivery methods for longevity molecules or health optim- skin health optimization molecules. The other side of that coin is using frameworks such as cleansers, such as a serum, such as moisturizer, such as mask, whatever that is, that you intuitively will know where it belongs in your skincare routine and then, perfect and again it's no, okay. a lot of the times it's it's mutually exclusive perfect and then so within all of that and developing these products that are really looking at cellular aging at that most basic fundamental level and then by figuring out that the NAD that our skin is so depleted in it that it's just absorbing it so then that's how this um, this beautiful skincare company young goose was was formed then correct yeah. Yeah, it's, yes. It's not even depleted and absorbing. Mm-hmm. Um, it actually is a story of affinity. It's a story of who's first in line and mm-hmm. who is more aggressive in, in, in cutting the line even and, and, and grabbing it. And in our skin or in, 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 in our biology, it's it's more like the animal kingdom rather than uh, civilized society. First, all of these mechanisms that are like burning fires that need NAD in order to t- turn off those fires, we first need to close those gaps. Once these gaps are closed, and by the way, you, you guys deal with, with genetics, with epigenetics. The main gaps are enzymes like heart, like sirtuins, like enzymes that are in charge of repairing DNA damage that is happening on a day-to-day basis. They don't only compete with one another, they compete with other mechanisms like ATP product, like, like, like energy production for that fundamental molecule called NAD. So as long as we don't kind of saturate their affinity or, or we kind of 
please them. Uh, we cannot even get to what we would want most, which is kind of fueling repair and all of the processes that, that, that we're interested in. Not to mention that we actually want a, a functioning DNA and, and it's important to, to feed those repair enzymes. No, absolutely. I mean, we look at it, as you rightly just said, from that genetic point of really looking at where the genetics are and what are the, you know, building blocks that we can support and supply the body that it may need more of or that it does have a lack of. Yeah. So then with all, because like a skin, the skincare industry is a massive multi-billion dollar, you know, revenue system out there. There's so many different ones. How does Young Goose differ from what is currently out there? So, so that for somebody, if they've got their choices, that they're going to go, no, I want that one. Well, it's funny because what we're trying to do is be more like a skincare company rather than differ. Because we're so different, we're not a skincare company. We're a research facility that that su supports itself with some sales of products, <laughs> right? <laughs> what we're trying to do is is tackle your a word that I hate, but I'm going to use it in order to get the conversation. To make the point. Yeah, yeah, to make the point. Uh, we target your biological age. Okay, how now getting from that, getting from your your cellular function to your shelf to to your countertop for you to use a product that requires a lot of a lot of education so what we're trying to do is make to behave like a skincare company to cut a lot of that education off if you would and that is i think what is really unique about young goose it's not we're not another skincare company and by the way you'll see it in in messaging anyone who's listening right now look at the ad or the communication of the product that you are buying. And it's going to say, and I guarantee it, by the way, it's going to say um, targeting the appearance of, and then it's going to tell you what it's targeting. And that's going to be the end of it. They are not, any company in the field right now is not targeting function, is not targeting, not correcting the reason something happened. So Re reducing the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles rather than what we are doing is targeting the reason of formation and reversal of fine lines and wrinkles. That's the fundamental uh, point. And I think if I broke it down to something someone can take home is we're interested in giving you quick results that are also long lasting. Within that, within those two parameters, we're also looking for resilience. We're also looking for adaptability because we know that with great skin resilience, resilience, there would also be uh, a, a, a contribution to those other two things. You'll be able to look your best every day and you'll be able to keep that beautiful skin for longer. Those are really great points. I love how you say that you're targeting the function because yeah. that is one of our, you know, why, why Owen and I, well, you know, Owen came to me to start the podcast is really about getting to the root cause, the mm -hmm. underlying you know, main space of, you know, why people get sick, what, you know, what's causing the diseases out there. So I really like where you're coming from. And thank you for delivering that message because that, that does share where your, your foundation is really coming yeah. from. So, yeah. Cause then I wanted to ask you, you know, from everything that you have researched from all your studies, you know, what is your opinion or what is that, that, that you found along the way that is the root cause of a skin aging? And also is the, cause you mentioned biological aging previously, are biological aging and skin aging the same? Well, wow, that's great. That's a great question. And I'm tempted to say yes, but I think the attribution is a little bit differently, especially, and, and, and it's more person specific and, and I'll get into why. So first of all, we are going, you know, normally in, 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 in business as a whole, it's very interesting. There will be an ex a per period of expansion and a period of, 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 of hunkering down. And that hunkering down is normally where the magic happens. And that's where we are today as far as like aging research, where, you know, in 2013, there was a seminal paper looking at nine r different verticals, different names were giving aging at every cell of our body. And then um, you know, fast forward nine years later, we've added like another five. Okay. Co uh, Denmark, 2022, you know, f th that's the, the, the last five that were added. And what we're, what we're doing now, what we're seeing now is actually a, a, a kind of reduction or an understanding how these, you know, names that we've already 12, 14 names that we've given different different mechanisms that contribute to aging in every cell in our body, we're starting to understand the interconnected connectivity between them. Okay. And 
what we're understanding is that almost at the core of everything is mitochondrial function, is a function of energy, ability to create energy, and the cost of energy creation. Okay. And that is that's the that's the that the baseline. Now that is what's in common. Every cell in our body has these different trajectories. Whether it is our cells cannot understand nutrients as well, can't create energy from them as well, don't have as many furnaces, which are our mitochondria, or furnaces that are less effective. We get cells that are more dysfunctional. We get cells that can't produce proteins as well, which means that they cannot give um, communicate as well. And cells that don't don't have the ability to hear that communication as much, um, and on and on and on and on. And, and again, a genomic instability and, and, and all of the things that we call aging, but at their root is how much energy am I making? How much energy does it cost me to make? And when I say cost, it's an in inflammation. So how much inflammation am I creating while I'm creating energy? And that is a, the dance of aging. Within our skin, the, the skin, as we grow older, and especially uh, it, it is more stark with women rather than men, it is what happens when we pass our reproductive prime or reproductive ability as a whole. And that is not because nature is sexist per se. It is just <laughs> because the, 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 the ability to pass on information, the ability to pass on information saying this gene is good for me, this gene is bad for me, ends when we stop passing on our seed. That's, that's where it ends. After that, evolution is playing a guessing game. So within our, so our skin is actually very special because it is a, a type of a reproductive organ in the way where it communicates sexual viability. It communicates youth. If you think about it, in the animal kingdom, right, we have our mouth. We can, we can, we can sweet, sweet talk our way into, into, uh, you know, someone, someone, uh, you know, having sex with us. In the animal kingdom, it's more difficult. Birds can dance and stuff, but it's more difficult because what we, our, our sexual uh, potency is communicated mainly through visual cues. And those visual cues in the animal kingdom, you know, we have our hair, skin, and nails, really, that are propagating those cues. So when we pass our reproductive age or prime, our body really stops communicating that or, or ebbs down that communication. That communication ebbs down. And what we need to do as human beings is, and that is where kind of there is divergence between every other cell in our body and our skin cells, is that we need to not only support some healing that the body is interested in doing, but we actually need to trick our body to heal or to re rejuvenate things that he ha it has no idea it needs to rejuvenate. A wrinkle, your body and my body, anyone's body, has no clue it's a, it's a problem. No clue. Uh, pigmented area, laxity, um, you know, hair, hair loss, um, frail nail, nails are a little bit more complicated, but these are, are in, as far as our body is concerned, evolutionarily, these are our one directional processes. And going and saying, hey, I don't only want to look like I do look today, tomorrow, I actually want to look better that is extremely difficult. And I'm going back to, you know, any other skincare company or aesthetic procedure, by the way, on the planet, really. It's saying, I am not going to actually do that. I'm not going to reverse that biological process. At least I'm going to make you look like I did. And that is why we, we differ, at least in our approach. We don't always succeed, but the approach is fundamentally different. And that's why I'm saying, we're not really even a skincare company. We're we're, we're translating, translating that research into skincare. Right. Yeah. So for what I'm understanding and hearing you say that really that whether it's your skin, whether it's your uh, biological, the whole body's age, it's really coming down to our body's ability to make energy and what cost it's coming from creating that. Mm -hmm. And then also looking at it too, is that the skin is that major communication to the outside world. And once 
we are moved past the ability to pass on that information genetically to other generations, then the body sort of powers down that ability. It may use or send resources elsewhere, something like that. Yes, uh, we'll, go, we'll touch. There are dozens of examples to, to why and, and redundancies in the body and, and how that works. But let's just touch on one that to me is extremely fascinating. And I think it, it'll, it'll paint the picture that we're interested in. Our body has a protective mechanism. So within those, those verticals that I've described, there are a special subset of verticals, of, 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 of names, of, of aging processes, pro-aging, that actually started as defense mechanisms. That we see that if we completely knock them out in mice, these mice actually die very quickly. But they, Could you they, name some of those? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so one of them is senescent cells. And that's the one I wanna I wanna tell the story of right now, and and, and why why the skin, the, what's happening in that Jekyll and Hyde type uh, mechanism in the skin. So our skin, if it always tried to, it, it ignored everything that is happening in our body, and always tried to show its show that we're 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 sexually it, it optimized all the time it it will turn over cells it will renew itself optimally or or when i say optimally is it in in an optimal way to communicate or to look our best but we know it, that senescent cells zombie cells cells that actually infect and age other cells they accumulate faster the more we renew cells. So something that, yes, yeah, so something that started as a mechanism to protect ourselves from cancer, from uh, a very localized issue when we're young, like a solar flare and that hits our skin and, and creates a lot of senescent cells. Oh, we need to, or creates a lot of DNA damage. Oh, we need to contain that. We need to arrest those cells and they become senescent and save the organism is now hijacking that and actually aging us. Okay, so these cells are hijacking, they're becoming unruly, they accumulate in tissue, etc. Well, these cells don't only age us, they actually infect our brain with inflammation and senescence. Our skin has a, a highway of information to our brain. And the more senescent cells we have, and this is a published study from, from Portugal, very interesting study, uh, age is a driver of overall aging, I believe it's called. Um, and these senescent cells can actually age our brain. So by trying to always look our best, we can actually drive aging if, we, if the body was designed in that way. And that's why it isn't. Okay, there is a duality there. The body cannot always uh, show its best self, if you would. So that is why us in our in our society, we also need to manage obviously our overall aging, but we also need to go back and see how can we eliminate those senescent cells, how can we rejuvenate our skin, etc., etc., etc. That's one example, by the way. Dozens of examples like that exist. Perfect. Yeah, I know you how you said it there. I've never, you know, as we are recreating our skin, doing things like that, that that's potentially also driving us to, I guess, you know, in the way I want to put it, and this might not be so eloquently, kind of wear us out faster. In oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and by the way, so we actually designed uh, one of our best sellers called ProCare is a serum that eliminates those senescent cells together with kind of cueing other, so a few active ingredients. One makes sure that we're not accumulating those cells and actually kind of recycling them or killing them off more recycling them to, to be exact. But another active ingredient there or a couple other in ingredients there actually kind of connect to our genome and upregulate genes that are in involved with collagen, elastin, hyaluronic acid production, lumicans, which are like super cool. It's a, it's a gene called LUM. It's like a really cool gene. Um, it's like the brick layer of our skin. Um, so we're 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 playing with that duality. And that's why the results we can we can show like crazy results from that one product. But this is the important dance that we need that we need to to create, and not only one or the other. Because what's happening in in conventional um, rejuvenate regenerative medicine is that we're saying, look at you know, look at for example someone like Brian Johnson, a famous uh, billionaire, uh, now obsessed with with longevity right but within his within the confines of his skin he has no longevity strategy whatsoever he has optimal appearance strategy mm. and he literally does a laser 
every month of his life. So what we're doing, yeah. So what we're doing here is exactly what you alluded to before: is we are basically saying to hell with you know tomorrow, to hell with all those mechanisms that are fraying in the background. I want to look my best tomorrow, and if yeah, yeah, and yeah, so yeah, okay, yeah, carry on. No, this is really great. I love where you're taking this. This is so good. I'm just saying that is the the assumption that oh, I'm going to take care of the rest of my body and I'll be the better for it. Uh, these things are will balance out. But that is like being a an NFL player and saying I'm going to eat the perfect diet and I'm never going to get injured because even if a 380 pound guy lands sideways on my knee, my you know steak and smoothie will save me no and and if if you remember i i talked about that divergence at an, at a later age one of the things that our skin is significantly more impacted is mechanical attrition and by the way it's not only our skin it, it is every tissue that requires elasticity anything from our, our gut to our joints to our even bones um, but not our muscles, for example, not our brain, for example. Uh, mechan um, mechanical alter alterations are much more prominent, and that's one of those verticals of aging, are much more prominent in elastic tissue. And obviously our skin is is, is that, right? That was, yeah, I was just going to ask, can you explain that to what those uh, mechanical alterate uh, yeah, that you were saying is? Yeah. Yeah. Um, every, every, I assume, I hope everyone listening to us heard about Peter Atiyah, uh, very, 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 uh, interesting doctor, uh, MD that wrote a book called, uh, Lifespan and in, uh, sorry, he didn't write Lifespan. He wrote Outla Outlive, Outlast, Outlive, which, which is a great book. And there he's, his really painting the demise of a person, uh, that broke their hip, shattered their hip. And he as, as far as his data, he's showing that that is where, you know, the really high majority of people's health span ends and they're, and all they're left is their lifespan. So he say, he says we can time it about 10 years from the time they shatter their hip until, until they have a grave illness, basically, that, that completely destroys their health. That's the last decade, healthy decade of their lives. Um, but why is that? It's not like we incurred any damage to any specific system of our verticals of aging. So how come we can we can determine that in such a high probability? And that is because the alteration in mechanism has now caused a reaction where I cannot train the way I did. I can't um, take care of my health the way I did. I can't go outside and enjoy the sun. I can't um, do anything that will keep me vital and, and virile. Um, it, that is an example outside of skin. Within our skin, there are many really, I hate to say cool, it's cool to me. <laughs> I'm sure it's not going to be cool to the listener. <laughs> there are many cool processes that just completely change. And again, as we say, said, something that was extremely positive is now extremely negative. So for example, if anyone did any body work ever, anyone heard about fascia ever? Yes, for sure. Our fascia, and, and we know the famous saying, fascia glides on top of each other, of itself, and other tissue. Well, our skin, our elastin fibers in our skin are designed to glide over other tissue and itself. But they have a specific coating that literally changes its polarity as we grow older, slowly, but changes its polarity. And from a gliding material, it becomes a sticky material. So it doesn't only look different. It literally is causing damage every time it tries to glide. Um, so that's something that happens naturally. We're going to go back to people like, you know, unfortunately, anyone from, and, and, and that is really unfortunately, anyone from like Tim Gray, Dave Asprey, Brian Johnson, anyone who at the end of the day has to show their audience that 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 what they're doing is expressed in better skin at the end of the day, because a lot of any one of our audience is here to understand how they look better. They are doing things like radio frequency, for example. Radio frequency is heating up tissue under your skin in order to hopefully create more collagen. But ha what happens in reality is that you are only creating scar tissue. And we talked about that gliding material, it's gone. So you're creating scar tissue that is now biologically older. 
you maybe look younger. By the way, the reason, so what happens normally is that people do it every three to six months. Well, you know, the first three to six months, your tissue is very inflamed and, and swollen, so you look better. That's not the result, that the, that's not the rejuvenation result you paid for. The rejuvenation result is actually what comes after. And that, that's when people look in the mirror and say, oh, the, the effect wore off. No, no, no. The effects have just settled in. And then they do it again. So we can understand how that thing that we might decide to do because we want to look younger actually ages us, you know, the same way the other things that we mentioned. That I'm so glad you brought this up because there are, one of my questions that I have is there's so many beauty treatments out there on the markets, like the lasers, the different types of facials, the uh, microdermabrasion, micro needling, um, and red light therapy, and these, all these things. And so like you're making such a wonderful point, which is sounding like that might have a perceived positive effect, but the actual effect is really, it sounds detrimental long term. So how do people know what, what are the right treatments or what are the things that are going to give them that long term optimal longevity and health that they're looking for? I don't know if there are any. I, I, I'm not, what, what I'm saying is I, there are good treatments. What I'm saying is I don't know if there are right treatments. So we can look at three verticals, which I've mentioned before, which is how I look today how I will look in 10, 20 years, and resilience for unexpected events, okay? And that is, that is um, okay, so how I look today, how, do, how will I look in 20, 30 years if nothing, if there was nothing unexpected, and then resilience or adaptability for unexpected events? This is kind of the triangle of skin health. Now, that you, me, everyone needs to decide what they're aiming at and what they're willing to give up. And in case they want to give up the least, what do they do to supplement around it? Okay. So us as a company, I'm not going to tell you don't do Botox. Don't do, you know, lasers or, or radio frequency or whatever that is. I actually had a very interesting, really famous guy, reach out to me personally on Instagram. It's like, oh, I heard you say the same, the same thing about radio frequency, but I just did it and I'm freaking out. <laughs> what should I do? Yeah. So I told him, you know what you should do? You should buy the, this Jawsicizer, which is like this little round rubber with a hole in the middle. It looked like a, like a yeah. And which you, which you chew on, you put it in between your front teeth and you chew on it. Amazon has different ones that you put on, on the sides of your, of your uh, mandibles. And, and that will not allow some of that scar tissue to settle. You're moving the same way if you had knee surgery or you need to move in order to break up some of that scar tissue and make it less mechanically cumbersome. Right. Yes. So it's not um, yeah. healing and solidifying in that way. Yes, or it is forming to our natural day-to-day -day movement. Mm -hmm. And by the way, there are other great benefits to that specifically, um, to, to that jazzicizer. <laughs> we can talk about that, but that's actually a great, <laughs> great thing. Anyway, so what we need to do is understand what we're willing to give and what we're willing to, to, to in order to, what, to, for something we're willing to gain. So normally what I, I like to recommend are mechanical stressors done with respect responsibility. So mechanical stressors are microneedling, are um, um, sauna, uh, heat, cold, things, things of that nature. Um, microneedling probably is the best um, player within that field of those three, three different scenarios. It, it makes us look better tomorrow because it creates more collagen. It uh, makes us look better in 20 years because working at that collagen creation, but also we're thickening our skin. So if we do it responsibly, uh, we can also build more resilience. Another one is vitamin A's, uh, retinol, retinoid, tretinoin, etc. And there, there is art to that too. We're going to see that in the future, uh, people are not going to look for the strongest one because they understand it is only in its active form for 24 hours. So they, they're going to look for something that they can actually apply every day. So the strongest I can apply every day, basically. Uh, it's not going to help. I'm not going to look for a weight that I'm going to lift. It's going to injure me. I won't be able to train for a year and say, well, that was the <laughs> most weight I could lift. No, I'm looking for something that will conform to the way my body functions in order to build muscle mass. So these things are great. Lasers are also great, but I would urge you to treat yourself if you're going to do lasers, IPL, uh, intense pulse light. Um, and 
some injections that do cause mechanical change, like Kybella, for example, I would urge your, you to look at yourself as an athlete, as Tom Brady of skin renewal. Because what we are trying to do, and by the way, this is something that I would recommend everyone to do anyway, we need to do the same way professional athlete, athletes do prehab, which is they, they prepare their body so they don't have to do rehab. We need to do pre-covery. We need to make sure our, our epigenetics are at their best form, which means our skin knows how to access the information, the recipe for collagen production, like a young skin can do, that it has the least amount of, li the least amount of like chronic inflammation attached to it. So when you introduce that inflammation, like microneedling, like like a laser, whatever that is. Any rejuvenation, by the way, is introduction of inflammation, okay? But what we need to do is lower the static noise of inflammation, chronic inflammation that we have. How do we do that? First of all, we start internally. We start with a low, low inflammatory diet. Uh, you know, we, we check our genetics. We make sure that we, you know, going back to uh, epigenetics, we make sure that we, um, that we know our methylation ability, so we check the five genes that are that we can infer how well we methylate uh, MTR, MTRR, MTFHR, etc. So HFR, etc. So we look at those genes and which we can do with the genetic test, and we supplement according to that to make sure that 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 is taken care of. And then obviously we design products to make sure that your skin is as young biologically. And again, I don't like that term. I prefer the term functionally because there is no set of people that they measured. They said, you know what? You really are 54. You're going to be the, right. the golden standard for 54 year olds. It doesn't exist. So let's say functionally younger, right? Because um, we make sure that you're as, as biologically or functionally the youngest you can be. And um, so for example, and that's what we invest research in. We took two years. We, we worked with uh, a an Austrian company called Longevity Labs, which they make a product called Spermidine Life. And for two years, we worked on creating the world's first skincare that aside from, from anything else, aside from, you know, stimulating collagen, all the good stuff, raising your NAD level, all the good stuff, it induces autophagy like, like intermittent fasting would. It recycles all of your malfunctioning cellular parts and cell cells and creates new cells. And we just launched it actually. And, and, and it's, it's, Definitely incredible to be at, at this space that we can we can push the benefit that people are getting forward. So we do it from the outside, we do it from the inside. We take spermidine internally to clear out those malfunctioning cells to create autophagy. We can do, you know, a three-day to seven-day fast every three to six months. So we do everything to optimize our health. That's that's the most important. Yeah. I hope you're enjoying this episode. I just need to take a moment to quickly tell you about a way that you can support the podcast by getting high quality, affordable supplements that Elwin and I personally use, and that's Feel Younger. What I love about Feel Younger is they have great quality products with minimal fillers, but the prices are very affordable. You can call their customer support team 20 hours a day, seven days a week, and in my experience, they're really helpful and friendly. And what I love most of all is the amazing descriptions Elwin one's written for each product category about that topic. There's so much information and education on it. I've actually learned more from reading their product descriptions than I have for most articles. So to support the podcast, please use Feel Younger for all your supplement needs. And to let them know we sent you, you can use promo code rejuvenateme for a 20% discount off your first order at feelyounger.net. That's 20% off your first order with promo code rejuvenateme at feelyounger.net. Yeah, that's a really good point because I was going to ask, you know, there are some people out there, I know we, we um, get it too from the, the spaces of saying, yeah, if you just eat right then and have the, an optimal diet and you're exercising correctly and all of that, then everything should be fine. But that's not always the case with it, is it? Well, first of all, that is good wishful thinking, but I'm reminding you that your genes didn't get the memo. Uh, mm, yeah. <laughs> and if you think of really, we can talk about lions and we can talk about people. Some people like my lion examples. Some people like my people examples. I'm going to go with people. Okay. You know, past your, again, past your reproductive prime, past your reproductive. When I say reproductive prime is because when we lived in a cave, if you're 30, 40, 50, even if you could bear children, um, you wouldn't, you shouldn't, because that is extremely dangerous. There's no, you know, 
Um, there, there's no uh, Mount Sinai hospital, you know, in the Serengeti a million years ago. So um, past your reproductive prime, your body is, especially human beings, we've evolved to have an extended period that surpasses our reproductive prime because we are members of a, we are contributing members of a, the community as far as our knowledge base. And that is what your body prioritizes. It pro prioritizes knowledge base. It's not prioritizing reproductive communication, which is your how good you look. And um, so it doesn't really matter if you train. And you if you don't, you know, I'm going to say something controversial that normally I don't like to say, but if you don't take care of your hormonal health, if you don't, you know, do like hormone replacement therapy, um, whether it is something you prescribe to or not, if you're not doing that, you're not going to have optimal skin. Okay. And that might be your choice, but you're not communicating to your body my hormones are of, of are those of a young young person, of a youthful person. If you're not, um, th so that's one debunkment of that saying. Well, all I need to do is behave correctly, and that's by the way a in a larger um, a larger mistake in systems where that is saying this is a a top down system in in systems you know engineering we talk about top down systems which is there is a blueprint there is a master plan and again you can see why I, another place where I disagree with Brian Johnson there is a blueprint the master plan and as long as you fo follow the master plan everything is going to work out. This is not how systems work, not even commuter system. The way that they work is a bottom-up systems. Your DNA is a bottom-up system. There is an a, a if-then uh, conditioning every step of the way. If you think about ants, they build beautiful Sistine or, or uh, cathedral-like you know, um, mounds. Um, they don't do it because there is some general ant with a drawing. They do it because they have a bottom-up process where they're saying, if this, if I have this chemical signal, that's what I'm doing. And that is the end result of it. That's how systems work in nature. And that's how your body works as well. And a lot of those things are shut off. There's only, there's only one or, or way less options for your body to decide as the older we get. It's not like if my skin get burnt, I'm going to produce the same amount of collagen I had before and I'm not going to be wrinkled. No, it's... I need to repair that DNA that is now sitting like a snow snowball, just snowballing more DNA damage that I had before I got to turn, uh, you know, that fire needs to be turned off. I need to put all my NAD there, et cetera. I mean, this is something we can really wax poetry about forever. But the bottom line is this is not a top-down process. There is no, a blu there's no blueprint you can follow. What we need to do is to uh, understand that and to try and, and gain marginal gains. So 1% more, basically. And I'm going to say something else. If you're living in the Western world, 80% of why your skin ages or, or the, the things that drive skin aging are not internal. So you have 20% that are what, that is what, what we call intrinsic aging, chronological aging, what you eat, etc. 80% is UV radiation, so about 40%. So we have 20, 40, a little bit less than 40, actually. And more than 40% is other environmental aggressors. Pollution, blue light, glyphosates, heavy metals, um, EMF. So all of these things together actually compiled are more than UV if you live in the Western world. And together with UV, they're 80%. I was going to ask you, because you, the, I mean, you brought up a really good point, because I was going to ask you, you know, what are the things are the number one thing that does age our skin? Because obviously we're living in this Western world in the technological age. We have computers, our phones all around us. We're being exposed to different things. You know, what impact is that having on our skin? Mm -hmm. So the impact, there, there are many impacts and... Um, some of the impacts we're just learning. Um, you can definitely, I mean, if you want to follow someone like Jack Cruz, a lot of what he's saying is Dr. Jack Cruz is extremely inaccurate, uh, just using a lot of inferences. But that's a good example of understanding that even within the scientific community, even doctors really d disagree with one another. Okay, Within that, what we know is, is that there is... UV radiation causes physical damage to our DNA, damage that is almost irreversible. Um, we also know that our body never evolved to deal with free radicals that are not based on oxygen, so carbon or nitrogen that are caused by burning of fuels. Our body has no idea how to break those down, so they accumulate and they, 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 they age you because they really wreak havoc. 
And all those things obviously do it in a, in a DNA level. So for example, you might be using a sunblock on your skin when you go outside. You might, and you might not. It, it's your decision. But if you're thinking to yourself, oh, you know, I'm getting my vitamin D3 um, and it's so great for me. Yeah, that's true. But whether you're using sunblock or not, you're exposed to everything else in, in case you're living in, in, you know, you're not living alone in, in, in the woods. Even then, by the way, you're, you're exposed to things that sh- your, your body has no idea how to deal with. It didn't evolve to deal with them. So when we make, for example, a sunblock, going back to <laughs> actually being a, a lab that, that, that targets aging, and then we need to excuse it by saying something that people know, we made a sunblock, yeah, 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 it has zinc oxide, it's, it's going to protect you from UV. But really what we made is, is, a, is a compound of other ingredients that protect you from the effects of like EMF. And, and we have a protein that builds structures, water around, around your skin's proteins so they don't get damaged by, by radiation. So it's very important to protect your skin, build resilience, find ways to remove inflam- inflammatory load and uh, one of the best things, by the way, is a uh, hyperbaric oxygen therapy chamber. Another one is a product called, I mean, the most famous one is Nano V, but um, by Inc. 3, but Brown's gas. Brown's gas is something that, that really allows your body to kind of get that signal for repair. And, repair from those free radicals, or is it sort yeah. of something else? Yeah, repair. So all of those things, by the way, all of the things that we've mentioned at some point in time, they their 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 trajectory is becoming free radicals. By the way, whether it is sun exposure or whatever that is, and I'll give you like an interesting uh, snippet. Uh, there was a study in, in a couple of studies in in Australia showing that sunblocks with an antioxidant compounded into them were twice as effective against the, the aging, the photo aging, aging from the sun. So. Within all of those things that we're saying, it's not like you can take one antioxidant, it's going to save you from everything. But within those things, we always won't want to address the oxidative stress aspect of it, because at some point, they all become oxidative stress. Very good point. Okay. So what would you say, I mean, where does dehydration come into all of this? Whether it's, you know, because w- there's a lot of stuff out there about it or people, they, their skin looks dry or they're internal. Like, is it a is it an issue of something that's internal or is it actually external? Can you speak to that a little bit? So actually, dehydration has very little to do with external, very little, um, meaning that we actually don't get hydration from the outside. If you put a moisturizer on with hyaluronic acid and whatever, the amount of hydration your skin really is going to get is non-existent. <laughs> so your skin actually gets hydrated from the inside from your bloodstream. Uh, what we can do from the outside is eliminate something that's called uh, transepidermal water loss, which is, means the water, the water that I lose to the environment. So if anyone ever changed their, you know, flew from Florida where I live to Nevada, You'll, you'll see your lips get che- you know completely dehydrated immediately because we're losing a lot of moisture to the environment. There is a gradient that our skin isn't used to, and it's losing a lot of moisture to the environment. So most moisturizers, good moisturizers, they do that well. By the way, when people put oils on their skin to hydrate their skin, uh, whoever sells an oil to hydrate your skin is not telling you the truth, and I'm saying it's extremely gently because um, your skin doesn't get hydration from the outside, and oils are very poor at preventing transepidermal water loss. Actually, they're really, really poor. Uh, Interesting. No offense to anyone who's selling an oil, but it doesn't, it doesn't exist. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a snake oil. Anyway. <laughs> well, can I just ask, why doesn't the oil work in that way? Because your skin isn't built to absorb moisture from the environment. Not only that, the, 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 where your skin uh, um, contains most of its moisture is in your hypodermis, the inner layer of the skin, where oils will reach our, your, because of the way your, your, your uh, skin barrier is built, they are going to stay on your skin barrier. So they're actually, it's like me trying to shake your hand from here. It is literally (laughs) impossible. We can think of shaking hands. We can understand how it would happen, but we're not in a physical location where it happened. Other things can happen. We can have a better skin barrier, 
which means impaired skin barrier, we know, loses more moisture, okay? But for the most part, we have significantly more effective ways to prevent transepidermal water loss. Um, biologically friendly polymers or, or different hydration components that are water-based because, because we, water and oil don't mix. So normally we want a water-based uh, barrier. Um, but, but the feeling of moisture is what most people are paying for. I feel more hydrated. Right. Great, fantastic. And oils have another nice, um, another nice feature, which is the prevention of damage to the to the skin matrix, to the collagen matrix. So the way we accumulate a wrinkle is by repetitive movement. And you can think of a rubber that you keep playing with. You're you're creating damage at the same spot over and over and over again. So oils do a very nice job at keeping the skin a bit more supple to create to to create a bit less damage. Again, within that, there are again significantly more advanced scientific ways to do that. We can do it with neuropeptides, argyrelin, lufacil peptides that exhaust. It's they're not Botox, but they're of the same family as in their in their effect, not in their toxicity but what they do is they don't let the same nerve fire twice and they do it they do it by the way by exhausting the nerve there's no chemical there but they're a peptide so they basically don't let your skin con uh, contract the same way twice so you're not accumulating as much of that of that damage so that's what we use for example instead of an oil which would feel great but you're really there's nothing there for you to gain results from so within those three pillars uh we're not really gaining that much uh you know longevity uh optimal appearance and 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 resilience there's no not much to gain going back to hydration yes the more hydrated we are the less hydrated we are the less our skin is prioritized for hydration right because our skin is not the first thing in the list unless we're 20 or 10 years old or or you know within that range so we need to top off the other organs that need water our, our lymphatic system uh, uh our, our liver uh etc our kidneys our our, our 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 heart brain uh obviously that organs that actually take a long time to hydrate and we are going to get better better results in skin hydration by the way grounding improves skin hydration really yeah um, and what we see is, and by the way, that's a pretty new research because there was a lot of debate. If you remember, Adam Ruins Everything. It was a TV show, Adam Ru Ruins Everything, that right. was very, very famous. And he, in air quotes, debunked hydration myths. And he's like, oh, you should just drink as much as you want. Well, actually, now we know that he was wrong because in, uh, a new study came out that correlated higher levels of sodium, which means lower hydration, really. Um, lower water content in the body with all-cause mortality. So we know, or we we assume, <laughs> from what we know now is that you're you're aging faster if 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 you are not hydrated. And again, our skin is not the first organ in the in the mix there. So we do need to stay hydrated in order to allow our skin to receive its moisture. Even though our body is seventy percent water anyway, we still need to check a lot of boxes for our skin to to receive its hydration. And by the way, what water we drink matters. Great question. Can I ask what's your preference and which water would that be? I mean, there are a few different waters that I would recommend. And again, it's price dependent. Uh, so deuterium, deuterium depleted water, uh, like a company called Light Water, is probably my first choice. But you're looking at really two bottlenecks. First, at least like $1,500 a month worth of water. Yeah. Technically speaking, you need to fly with your own water case case of water bottles everywhere you go so you know um but um we do want to if what i'm drinking right now is uh, uh hydrogen water with with celtic sea salt and lemon and what that does it in introduces some kind of structure to the water it restructures some of the water molecules so that is also positive for our mitochondria and um in general obviously i hate, highly discourage people drinking tap water if you want a really cool, inexpensive way to restructure your water is it's actually with chia seeds. Really? Okay, how do you do that? So the the film around chia seeds is structured water. So by by drinking water that 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 we put chia seeds in and we let them restructure that water and we're drinking that, we're actually getting restructured water. Uh, we still want to add you know minerals there, trace minerals. I prefer Beam Minerals, the company Beam Minerals which have fulvic and humic acids. Um, 
which have all of those things that we talk about as far as like trace minerals, but it does have also something that normally we get from the ground, which is from the humus, which is the top soil, and that we don't get as much. And, you know, talking about getting things into our cells, we actually need fulvic and humic acids in order to usher most nutrients into our cells or to improve nutrient absorption. So, you know, and again, I have no financial interest in in promoting any of the things that I'm saying right now. Um, this is something that I do on a daily basis, very inexpensive, again, like probably $30 a month. And I get really high level of minerals that and, and also improve the absorption of other things. So even if I want you to use my uh, products and I'm telling you, oh, please use the products. They are going to make you look younger. At the end of the day, my interest is that your cells can usher these ingredients in in a much more effective way. Yeah, and efficiently as well, because it's great that you're, you've got the topical solution and everything that's working here. But if the internal system ecosystem is not functioning at that optimal yeah. level, then yeah, it can be a bit of a harder process. Yeah. Yeah, I want to jump back to we, we before when you were talking about um, men and women mm -hmm. in in the process for skin care and um you know should men and women have different programs because they're different skin and they're different um hormones and things like that or does it matter doesn't really matter and also you know if you subscribe to what i said before that if one of your goals is optimal skin is, is you should have uh, HRT, hormone replacement therapy, as part of your strategy. Before that, when when women are still menstruating, yeah, you ha you do have a menstrual cycle with different hormonal dominance in each part of your cycle, which actually does play a role on uh, different actives that you would choose for skincare. And um, we 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 did record a podcast on it. My wife and I, she's a, she's a an incredible biologist that that really broke it down very well. What was the name of the podcast? It's called Biohacking Beauty. Elwin was on it, uh, and um, and and there is a pod there is a podcast about uh, syncing your cycle together with with your skincare, um, and that is something that that is extremely extremely important for people who are still menstruating. But if you're you know even perimenopausal or or, po or, or menopausal, there is no there isn't much fr fluctuation hormonally. So really what we're looking at is a much more fundamental level of supplying the skin with stimulation and supplying the skin with building blocks in order to, to adapt to that stimulation the best way. Um, so what I, what I recommend men and women, and again, it's, it's all, it's not only budget, fun, financial budget, it's also attention budget. What are you willing to do on a regular basis? So what I recommend is obviously wash your face twice a day. You don't want to wash your face twice a day, wash your face at night, Wash your face with water in the morning. Apply a serum. A serum is going to give your skin the direction or the, the system the direction it needs. Serum has no other obligations other than active ingredients. And normally, uh, there are serums, for example, our Youth Reset, which is a you serum that tries to cover a lot of bases. But most serums are going to try to give you one specific direction. Wrinkles, pigmentation, uh, acne, hydration, whatever that is. So that's how you can choose your preference. Moisturizers are much more broad spectrum. So you have your serum, you have your moisturizer, and then you have your sunblock that you're putting in the morning. Hopefully you're using one with an antioxidant and one that is mineral-based. Um, Again, you, you don't have to choose ours. And, and the reason I'm saying that is because we do have our obligation or our commitment is to make the best products in the world or the most cellular function oriented and, and, and effective products in the world. But guess what? That commitment also is in standing just juxtaposition to price. So we're not the most expensive company in the world, but we're definitely not the cheapest. So what I'm trying to do is give options. You, you want to choose a cheaper option, just go for zinc oxide and go for an antioxidant in your skincare, in your sunblock. And that's basically it. You don't want to, you don't want any chemical that's, that's ending with O and E in your, in your sunblock. Uh, and that is that is probably the, the most general rules I can give you. And the way that you can know that you flip the box, don't look at the label. Don't don't look at the label, see that it says mineral sunscreen and think you're good because the FDA doesn't obligate me to tell you if it's only mineral sunscreen. So even if I have 1% that's mineral, I can call it mineral sunscreen. Flip the box, see drug facts, make sure zinc oxide is the only active ingredient there. Okay. 
Um, and that is, that's your sunscreen. Then you can look at the other ingredients, see if you can see an antioxidant. Astaxanthin is a popular one. Uh, we use a really, really, really complicated one that, that protects you against all of these different pollut pollutants. So it's a little bit more expensive. Uh, but yeah, that, that's, that's the bottom line. It's, it's pretty simple. Cleanse your face, decide the direction that you want to take your skincare routine, apply a moisturizer on, apply sunblock when you go out. If you want to simulate repair, if you think you're, you're doing a good job, you want to simulate repair introduce any type of vitamin A, uh, which would be uh, your retinol. Uh, ret uh, re uh, you know, there are many different forms. The most strong one is retinoic acid, which is called tretinoin. Um, I'd recommend starting low and slow and building amount or, or building vitamin A, using vitamin A, which you can use on a regular basis every day, rather than trying to find the strongest, as I said before. But that is, that is a, a, a routine that you can live with. Um, micro needle, you can do micro stamping at home. Because if you do a roller, the problem with a roller is that needles do not enter your skin in 90 degrees, and then they rotate to 90 degrees, and they leave your skin mm. non-90 degree angle. So they bore into your skin, if it makes sense. Yeah, it does. So, so that's not optimal then, because the, the way you described it, it makes sense. It feels like there's a lot more damage that's being done as it's moving through. Yeah, exactly. So we want to, and by the way, it's less sterile, uh, needle, uh, uh, derma stamping as it's called, which is micro needling, but you're, you're lifting and, and stamping your skin. Most of those things are also, uh, um, ejectable. They're also like one-time use, which makes it more sterile. Uh, so you have the steri sterility aspect. You have the, the, the less, the, the more efficacious kind of application aspect. Um, go to your esthetician. If you want to really rejuvenate, you can start with a peel, like a glycolic peel um, that you do every couple of weeks for, for like six weeks or, or 12 weeks, which is a light version. You can go for a light laser like BBL. But again, the more you do, treat yourself like an athlete, pre-cover uh, pre and then recover. And obviously from the outside in, from the inside out, there are peptides like BPC-157 and TB-500. That you can use, uh, you can load your your body with, or or GHKCU copper peptide, which we use topically, but can be injected. All of these things need a loading phase. Do your homework. You know, talk to your provider, whoever can prescribe it. Um, so you don't want to do them just after. You actually want to do them normally, like six weeks before you you do your thing that you're doing, your laser, whatever that is. And and yeah. No, it's wonderful. I mean, look, I could carry on asking you so many things. I know we're coming up to time soon, but I also want to um, delve into, you know, the products that you do have on your website. Let's say somebody's interested because I've had a, a look. I do see that you do have a quiz up there at younggoose.com. So let's say somebody's interested. Where would they start? What is it that you would recommend that um, for somebody beginning uh, with your company? So actually, normally I would say the quiz, but we've just launched the world's first uh, duo, which is a serum and a cream that target the 12 hallmarks of aging. So the the, the 12 verticals, and it targets more things as well, but it targets all 12 names that we give aging. And that would be the best way to start. So there's no quiz even involved. It's called Youth Reset and Youth Daily. Our serum is, is in a microcapsule state which allows it to penetrate to the deepest layers of the skin, kind of towards the middle. Our moisturizer is middle to top. So we target 3D, all, all hallmarks and also all layers of the skin. So this is first. You want to add a cleanser? Again, adaptogenic cleanser. We only have one cleanser. It's pretty easy. Uh, you want to add um, our sunblock. It's called BioShield SPF 40. Boom, you have a, a, a regimen right there. If you want a, a more complex regimen, you can always write to us. We have a uh, uh, a bunch of estheticians and, and specialists that are just waiting to for you to ask your questions. You can write to service at younggoose.com. You get your own you know routine that is specific to you. There is a quiz that you can take. I really recommend writing because the quiz we didn't update the two new products yet. So I really recommend writing for now. And um, if you wanted to introduce a product to an existing routine, you don't want to change anything. You want to introduce one product to an existing routine. And you want to give Young Goose a chance. I actually recommend a completely different product. It's called Hyperbaric Mask. It's our, probably the most famous product that we have. It mimics you being in a hyperbaric chamber as far as the benefits to your skin. You apply, it's a gel. You apply it after your moisturizer overnight. Every night you leave it overnight. And uh, there's a reason it's, it's a cult product within the biohacking community. Uh, any biohacker you know is using it, let me tell you, and, and uh, 
<laughs> uh, that would be something that I'd highly recommend, by the way, also to recover and pre-cover from uh, any aesthetic procedure. So I give you a lot of tools as far as like what people can use. Um, I believe we have a, a coupon code for you guys, which I don't know what it is. We're going to take a quick break to share with you one of our amazing sponsors, Genetic Insights. What makes Genetic Insights uniquely valuable is that they test over 83 million different variants, which guarantees a 99.7% accuracy on all of their DNA reports. With over 100 reports available, you get comprehensive insights into what your DNA is telling you about how to optimize your health today and in the future. I found reviewing my results to be incredibly accurate and applying some of the recommendations which are personalized to your individual DNA to be extremely helpful for me and my family. I also loved how easy it was to upload my raw DNA data that I already had from previously using Ancestry.com because Genetic Insights supports uploading raw data from all major platforms. To get your health reports, go to geneticinsights.co and get 20% off today by using coupon code rejuvenate. Remember that supporting our sponsors supports our podcast, which allows us to keep sharing this important information with you free of cost. So go get your Genetic Insights health reports by going to geneticinsights.co and use coupon code rejuvenate for 20% off today. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but don't worry, we'll put it in the link in the description below Great. for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I So you mentioned the Youth Reset and the Youth Daily. That is the new duo that is pretty much just recently launched. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the hyperbaric mask. So if somebody's wanting to give Young Goose a try, they've already got their skincare regime. They can bring that in, put it on their skin um, from doing their routine at night before bed. Um, let me ask you this because there's, um, you know, a lot of... As you mentioned earlier, uh, you know, there's skincare routines of, you know, then you've got your eye creams, you've got, eye, yeah. you know, your serums. Um, would there be any, let's say somebody's like, oh, maybe I do want to give it a little bit more of a go. I've got a little bit more money to spend. Would there be any other products that you would recommend? Yeah. So a full routine looks like this. Um, you wash your face with our adaptogenic cleanser. You apply an essence and our essence has very, very interesting NAD precursors, NAD building blocks that are very, very, very quickly absorbed. They absorb 30, 32 times faster than our other NAD precursors. So they allow your skin to use anything else that comes after that much more effectively. So that's our amplifying essence. Then you apply your youth reset serum. And, the, and, and then in the morning and in the evening, you're going to have a slightly different routine. In the morning, you apply ProCare, which is a serum I mentioned before that eliminates senescent cells. In the evening, you apply BioRetinol, which is a retinol that mimics your natural uh, cadence of, use, of producing vitamin A in your skin. You still need to introduce it slowly, but that is the best retinol, I believe, in the world. And then you're going to use twice a day, you're going to use your youth daily moisturizer. And then in the morning, you're going to apply BioShield SPF 40. Uh, and in the evening, you're going to apply your hyperbaric mask and you're going to go to sleep. And this routine is, um, again, we have many people using it. The results are bananas. <laughs> and I mean, I know this is kind of like how long is a piece of string. If somebody's looking for results, how long do you think they're going to see results? How long will it take? Well, I, you know, unfortunately, we... we the results are pretty quick. And the reason I say it, unfortunately, oh, and by the way, we have an eye cream. It's called eye care. You can see results like after the first time you're putting it. But um, unfortunately, you can see results within the first time your cells turn over, which is uh, four to six weeks. The reason I say unfortunately, because what I really want to, for people to understand is that we can improve your skin over years of using it. So if you are getting your results, a lot of people are now trying to save on material, trying to preserve those results, which is completely fine. But using Young Goose, whether it is one product or, or a series of product, over time will literally change your the ways your cells look under a microscope. It's going to change the way your, 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 the, the, your skin's identity is over time, which is what I feel is the most unique aspect. So then let me ask you this, because as we talked about, um, Young Goose isn't the, you know, the, the 
least expensive on the market. It's not the most expensive on the market, but let's say somebody is on a really tight budget. Is there just one product you would recommend for them? Or, you know, or maybe is it recommending you have one of your products, but just in general, yeah. what, did, what would you say that that person should invest in? Well, you know, we have a, our cult, the first product we ever came out with, it's called Care NAD C Moisturizer. It's $98. It's last, it lasts, we say it lasts 60 days. It lasts about 90 days, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but we don't want to, you know, we want you to at least to have, you know, we don't want you to skip days. So we say 60 days, but it'll last you two to three months. And so it really is compared to another product that normally companies make a product that would last a month. So it's about $45 a month of, or $50 a month that you'll be spending on your skin. And it really covers all the bases. Uh, so again, you could just do this under your eyes, on your neck and chest, obviously on your face. That could be your, your kitchen sink approach to skincare. Wonderful. And then there's, um, obviously there's different skin conditions out there. There's some people that struggle with acne or rosacea, you know, with a couple, like two spaces. Why do those skin conditions exist and what can people do to help um yeah, heal them. Yeah, so unfortunately, most skin conditions are those 20% of things that are driven from the inside. Uh, autoimmune responses, um, obviously uh, hormonal changes, uh, gut uh, dysbiosis. So these things, obviously, we need to treat first. Another thing that happens is something that we call my friend, my dear friend, Kiran Krishnan, the previous owner of Microbiome Labs, the guy who sold Microbiome Labs and and and, and uh, founder of a company called Civ, uh, Civ Care, which is a serum for micro, uh, microbiome of the skin. Uh, we, we have a term that we like to say that is called leaky skin, which is a uh, dysregulated skin barrier, which means not necessarily that it, it allows more molecules, more disrupting molecules to get into your body through the skin but rather it's hyper-reactive to disruptions from the environment. And that is a lot of what rosacea is, a lot of what uh, uh, atopic dermatitis, uh, a lot of the skin conditions that we get during, during seasons are because of that disrupted skin barrier, that leaky skin, as we call it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, honestly, I recommend Civ. It's a, it's a $50 product per month again, but it's a $50 product. You're going to get great, great results. Uh, if you want something... <laughs> Uh, more robust, but with a price tag, we have a product called Bio Barrier, which is $175. So you have that side, you have the other side, your budget and, 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 and both products are going to be great. Beautiful. Well, I'm going to say I have thoroughly enjoyed this conversation. I don't want it to end because I just you love your plethora of knowledge and your dedication to everything that you've shared with us today. I, I um, For everybody that's listening, you know, please do visit younggoose.com and check out those products. And before we close, Amate, is there anything like a final thought? That's what I always ask Ellen before we close that you'd like to share with our listeners today. Yeah. If Again, if you, if you guys really want to nerd out, about skincare and about skin health, not necessarily about skincare. Again, we have a podcast. It's called Biohacking Beauty, where we go, you know, an hour and a half long on why vi ascorbic acid vitamin C will damage your DNA and other types of vitamin Cs are really good for your skin. And, you know, what is autophagy and cellular renewal and why lasers are bad or whatever that is. And we have guests like Elwin, for example, talking about the, the epigenetics and genetics of, of youthful skin. So um, anyone who's really interested in, in maybe becoming like a skin expert to themselves and others around them, that's a way to do it. Oh, beautiful. And thank you, everyone that's joined us today. Do please remember to leave your comments below. And if you've got some questions for Amate, let us know and maybe we can get him back on again and, and he can answer those for us. And remember to please hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss an episode and we will see you next time. Hey, I hope you enjoyed that video. You may have noticed I recommended a few different videos in that episode. And one of the ones I recommend is just here if you want to click there. Or another one I recommend is just below if you want to click on that one and watch that next.